Okay, now what we're going to work on is labeling. So what I need you to do is I need you to type in your layers, LA for layers, and the layers are going to be underneath, um, go up into this box here, it's your search box, go C, and then C how it has a little wild card, it has the star um, on it. So Anno, and turn that on, and I also need you to, I'm going to X out of that, and I'm going to turn on the zero layer. All right. This should allow me to isolate the layer for annotation. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Underneath the tab that says annotate, so annotate here. So click on the annotate or add labels at the top and it's going to pull up this dialog box. Change that, pull it down to line and curve. It'll be single segment. The line label is going to be bearing over distance. Okay. Um, and the curve is going to be, yeah, distance, radius, delta. I'll show you how to change this um, because it's going to probably be the wrong size. So I'm going to add the label. Let me get this out of the way. And I'm going to click on this line. Okay. So that is fairly large. You know, it's taken up most of the, 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 the layer. Also, it's got too many decimal places. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to fix that. With this open, if you pull this down, you can edit the current selection. Okay, this is a little bit above what you normally would do. You would already have this set up, but since this is out of the box type of program, we don't have it set up. So the bearing has a height of 0.15. I'm going to change that to 0.08. Okay, and then if you pull this down, it has a distance, and I'm going to change that to 0.08. Okay, now the distance has too many decimal places, and the bearing has too many decimal places on it. So to change that, I'm going to start with the bearing at the top. If you click on general segment, click that, it's going to come up with this dialog box. See how many decimal places it has in there? If I come over here and I highlight this, I can change the precision to one degree. Okay, I can change it to one second. So that's how much precision it is. Then you actually have to hit this little arrow key to get it to change over here. You're going to do the same thing. So notice how it how it rounds it off. The next thing is the distance. So I'm going to click on the, the, the contents, click here, and I'm going to click on the text over here, and I'm going to change it to two decimal places. And then I have to hit the arrow key to make it shift. Okay. Apply. Okay. And now it, it looks small, but it'll, it'll be fine. We may end up having to change to 0.1, but I'm going to leave it like this for right now. Because when you start labeling stuff, you get a lot of information in there. And now you can actually add them to here and here and here and here, 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 here. You can click on the arc. Okay, see it's too big. You can click on the overall. And this one, this one, this one. Now notice that it has all the same information because it's labeling it all at once. If I need to label a portion of it, now I'm going to delete these two. And I am going to click on that. And over here, this is where I, why the property palette's nice. If you pull this down, you go bearing and distance. See how it puts it all on one line, but it puts it on the bottom and it's still big. So while that's still open, up here at the top, I'm going to flip the label so it's on top. You can grip this. So all it is is hovering over and then I'm left mouse clicking and I'm just dragging it to the midpoint. Well, it's too big. So I can come over here. In my, I'm going to go ahead and close this. I can come over here on the bearings and distance, pull this down, and go create it and edit. It's the same thing as we did before. And then it pulls up this label here. You can pull this down and go edit current selection. I know this is a lot, but just bear with me. So pull this down, go bearing, and we're going to change that to 0.08. Oops, 08. 
and we need to change the segment value. So the general segment, notice it's in two um, pieces of information. So I'm going to change that to one degree. Ah, not degree, I'm sorry. One second, and then arrow over. And then I'm going to highlight this one, and it says general segment length. I'm going to change that to two decimal places. Arrow over. OK. And this is what the, 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 the surveyors have to do when they go and adjust it. Usually they already have a template, but I'm showing you all the steps. And then OK. All right. Now, you don't typically need the arrow, but I'm not going to change that right now. The other option while you have this labels, if your labels is gone, then just click on your annotate tab and click on the highlight at the top, little tag looking thing. Pull this down, go line and curve. Now the other option is line between two points. Click on that and then you're just going to do distance and then you're going to add. And then you can pick end point to end point and it puts a distance on there. End point to end point. End point to end point. Okay. Now, if I drew it this direction, it would put it on the right side. Okay. Now, to change that style, since it's not matching, I'm going to right click. I'm just showing you all the different ways to do it. I'm going to right click on it, select it and right click, and edit label style. Now, again, you have to pull down and go edit current selection. And on this one, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to change the precision to two. Hit the arrow key to send it over. Okay. Make sure it says 0.08. Now, once you learn this, this is how it's going to work for most of the project. Okay. Same with this one. Now, I'm going to right click, edit label style. Pull this down, edit current selection. I'm going to change that to 0 0.08. Now notice on this one it has multiple information, so you have to do this unfortunately for all of them. So the first one, we're going to change it to two decimal places, shift it over, click on the general segment curve, change that to two decimal places, shift it over. Now you're going to pull this down. So it has the, the, the total length of the curve, and it has the radius of the curve, and it has the delta. Okay, I don't know if you all have had the, the survey class yet. I'm going to change that to 0.08. I am going to change the delta into uh, degrees and I'm going to change that to degrees, minutes, and seconds in one second and I'm going to send it over and OK. And apply and OK and then OK. OK? So that's how you get it to start to be labeled. All right. I'm going to show you one last thing. I would like you to clean up the rest of it um, as part of your assignment. So one last thing is I want to do a alignment stationing. So I'm going to create the alignment starting at 10 plus 0, 0 here and have it stationed this direction. What I mean by that, I'm going to close that out. On your home tab, notice up here it has alignment. So when we're creating plan and profiles, and I'll go over those more later, pull this down and create an alignment from object. Now I'm going to pick the object, I'm going to pick my center line. This sets me up to start creating my plan and profiles. Notice this little arrow here, okay? That's the direction I want the alignment to go, okay? If I wanted to go the opposite direction, I would tell it to go reverse. I want it to go this direction. Unfortunately, it's not the best direction to go because I want to start at a known point. And then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to give it a name, I'm going to call it Street A. 
the starting stationing, I'm going to start it at 10 plus 0, 0. Don't start a stationing at 0 plus 0, 0 in case you ever have to create more stations backwards because we don't want to put negatives. So basically, we're starting at a, a station of 1,000. Uncheck the curve because we don't want to undo what we did. We picked that curve. If we leave this on, it's going to create a curve here of 200 feet radius. And then I am going to leave that checked as erase existing entities. And then I go, OK. Now, what happened here is it's on a layer that I had frozen off. So I'm going to type LA. And to see all layers all back, turn them all back on, I'm going to select an object any one that has the little light bulb off, I'm going to right click and I'm going to select all and I'm going to click on a light bulb and turn everything on. Give it a second. Well that didn't work. Select, turn the light bulb back on. There we go. And regen. All right, regen, R-E-G-E-N, turns everything back on. Now I'm going to show you one more command to turn things off. If I don't want to see something and I don't want to just turn it off, I'm going to use the little freeze button. So I'm going to click on the little snowflake button, and I'm going to freeze off the contours, I'm going to freeze off the text, I'm going to freeze off the labels, and the existing stuff, and the power poles, and the easements. I'll fix those easements later. I'm going to get rid of the house. Um, and now I've got a basic, now I'll get rid of this. All right. So now I've got basically the alignment drawn. I've got the original uh, bearings and distances from the original uh, survey. I'm going to go ahead and delete these off. I'm cleaning this up to make a, a final drawing. I'll just show that. Now the station, you can see it starts at beginning point BP. 0, 0, or 10 plus 0, 0, and it ends with an EP. You can also click on this and drag it out if you wanted to. Also note it has your PC and PT, point of curvature and point of uh, tangency. All right. So these are the options. These are the things that we show. Granted, you can change the stationing um, of this. You can also uh, freeze the stationing off. The other thing is to label the center line. When you're doing a plat, a final plat, you won't have stationing. When you do a preliminary plat, you'll see the stationing because it's going with construction plans normally. Um, at least that's been my experience. Now I'm going to click on annotate again. I'll show you one more a labeling technique. I'm going to add labels. And this time I'm going to pull it down to an alignment because I created the alignment. I am going to pull this down and go multi-segment, bearing over distance, curve, and I'm going to click that, and I'm going to pick the alignment, and it's going to label it nice and neat, okay? So I have the bearings and distances on that. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'll show you the freeze button again, go to the home, the little snowflake, and I'm going to freeze that off. Oops. Now it did that because apparently everything is on the same label. So layer management is important. I'm going to undo. U for undo. Undo. Now here's another thing. When I click on this, I should be able to see. So it says it's on the C rogue text. And this is on C rogue text. So what you can do is I'm going to create a layer. 0 dash F A U dash center line alignment text. I'm going to go ahead and make it text, not test. Uh, you can double click to get it active text. All right. Now I should be able to. Sometimes when they're on zero, it's a very finicky. So I'm going to pull this down and I'm going to go zero. If I type in zero, it pulls everything on top. All right. I should now be able to go and find the C road text. So if I come over here and go C dash road, and I can find the text. I can scroll down here. That's a lot of scrolling. So I'm going to go dash text. Now I'm going to freeze that off. And there we go. 
So this will be more like your, your final plat, how it looks. Now what I want you to do for the final assignment is go ahead and label the rest of the lots just to get a feel for it. So the bearings and distances tell me that um, from these property corners, it's south 89 degrees, 49 minutes and 27 seconds east, okay? And it's 115 feet. This one's 100. This is a nice way to check the distances. Um, now that we've got the style that we want, you can also, because most of the time when this arc is for the entire arc length, in plats, you also have the entire length, but you also have the individual lengths. So if you drew an a, uh, a arc, a three-point arc, I can do a three-point arc from here, shift right click nearest to end point. Okay. Now I can actually um, go to annotate and I'm going to do a line and arc. Now I'm going to add it and then if I click here it gives me the only that portion of it. Okay. So I am going to, now here's the other option, is you can pull this down like that. Now the text is wrong again. So edit label style. I'm showing you this. Unfortunately, it's not the most fun thing to do um, is cleaning it up, but you're, you need to learn how to do that when you get to make the plan look nice. So when you're working on a project out of, out of the, I call it out of the box, when you're working with AutoCAD, you need to know how to fix things. So unfortunately, this is a learning curve. 0.08, and make sure that it's stacked text, not as composed, but it's stacked text. And then I'm gonna change the arrow to 0.08 also. Apply, and okay, and okay. Okay, so you'll create the arcs for the individual and you'll have an overall arc. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and I'll show you what I want the end result to look like. And I'll post that as a PDF or a JPEG on the outside of the plan. But go ahead and give it a try. So I anticipate you labeling, creating your, your initial uh, final plat or what it would look like. It won't have everything, but it's a good step. This is a nice practice for you to learn how to use CAD again and, and start to learn how to use Civil 3D. If you have any questions, just let me know. One last thing I forgot to mention is you'll need to have uh, lot numbers. So you can go up to annotate and you can pull annotate and you can come here and do multi-line text. I like multi-line text best. And then it says specify a corner. So I'm going to pick and then I'm going to pull it to the, down into the right. And that'll allow me to like type in one. Okay. Usually it's for me, I'm, I always get the wrong size text first. So I'll show you how to fix it. So this is going to be in this one. This is, I'm going to change this to the annotative style and it's going to say yes. And the paper space height is going to be point one. I'm going to change that to point 0.1 instead of point 0.08. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit bigger. So these are going to be our uh, lot numbers. And I need to move that to the correct layer. So I'm going to go home, change this to layer. So you can see I've added my labels. I'm going to X that. I'm going to create a new layer called 0-FAU- I'm going to just call this text for right now. Make sure you don't have it frozen. Make sure it's current. And I am going to close out of that. So I'm going to highlight the one that I just created. And I'm going to pull this down and put it on the proper layer. Mm, FAU text. Okay. So I might actually change that to be a bit bigger. I can change that to be 0.12. All right, so I'm going to move that over to here. And then I'm going to copy it. And then, oh, copy, C-O, C-O for copy. I'm gonna pick the object, hit enter, and then start placing it. 
F8 will give you an orthogonal ability. Hit F8 again, your function key, and it'll take it off. Now they're not all going to be one. I need to change the text. So there's other ways to do this also. I'm going to CO for copy. And then F8 to get it set. F8. And then I'm going to copy this. CO for copy. And then I'm not going to make you all watch me do all this text. Um, so to change text, if you click on it, just to give you an idea, you can come over here and then you'll type two. Another way to do it is double click and three. You'll also, um, in a plat, you won't have these lines. Okay, you'll have also tracked names and you'll have street names listed. Um, but I'm going to stop right here. Again, sorry, I just wanted to, to uh, clarify that. And then what I'd like to do, I am going to show you one, one last thing, is to print. Let me close that out. Um, to print. So there's the plotter. Um, and there's also your layout tabs. Layout tabs are um, paper space, model space. We need to create a border. So each team will have their own border style. But for right now, if you, your, your viewport, um, and I'm not sure if, if everybody got to the point of viewports and not viewports, I'm not going to explain it. When you get this, you'll actually have a viewport set up. And that viewport, so if I double click in here, see how it changes the color. If I double click out here, that line goes differently. If I click on the line, it has a lock right here. When you double click inside, and you can actually, if I double click inside, you can actually touch the text. Now, if I click here is another way to do it. I can't touch the text. Okay, so that would be paper space. It's like a window. So I'm looking into the model space here. But anyway, so I'm going to hit the little printer button. So it's plot. And it's set up already for the scale and the size. And I'll go over that more later in the semester. Go ahead and hit preview. And this is grayscale. Okay, so I would change all the text or all the label styles um, or the line colors back to white right now because um, the yellow is is not the correct color. So I'm escaping out of that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go LA. And for right now, I'm going to right click and select all. And I'm going to change everything to just white for right now. So when I go to print it, just so you can see it, we can change the colors as we go along. There, there's nothing held um, permanent. So I'm going to go OK. I always like to preview. And you'll get a plot. Oops, let me pull this over. You'll get this dialog box up. I'm just going to save it to my documents and save. I know this is a lot of information, um, but I want to get started early in the semester so you have a, a, a good foundation for when you, when you start your project. Now when it pops up, it will look like this. I've got um, blue bean. You may have Adobe, but this is what it's gonna end up looking like. And it is to scale, it's a 40 scale, all right? So this is what I anticipate you uploading to me. Um, of course, I want the numbers correct. And uh, I'll uh, clean this up and I'll post what I, I expect, all right? If you have any questions, again, sorry, just let me know.